My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it's me again. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, we're coming to the close, <laughs> to the end. And as we opened the uh, PCNE with prayer and with Eucharist, it is just fitting to bring it to a close. Also, around the Eucharistic table. And we are blessed to have as our presider for this evening's uh, Eucharist, the Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines, His Excellency, the Most Reverend Gabriele Caccia. And we thank him for the beautiful message that he sent to us and which was read at the opening liturgy last uh, what day? Ah, I was just testing you. <laughs> you know, for photographs now, you don't say cheese anymore. You say Wednesday, ah, ah, please say Wednesday, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> and uh, we thank our two bishops, Bishop Mel Ray of uh, Lucena, Bishop Cornelius Sim of uh, Brunei, the, the two companions of uh, the Apostolic Nuncio working in the uh, Nunciature, Father Kevin from the United States, and Father uh, Viola no, from Argentina. So we thank all of you for staying. As is quite obvious, my synthesis already dwelt on a portion of the gospel. But as a totality, the readings and the closing of the PCNE invite us to focus on Jesus. After all the situations, all the stories, all the persons that we have encountered, all the callings to mission, now we bring all of them to Jesus. In the first reading from the prophet Jeremiah, we sense the deep frustration of God because the leaders of Israel were not good shepherds. The kings, ang mga hari ng Israel, who were supposed to reflect to the people, the love, the caring, that the true king, God, wanted his people to receive, they just failed. They tried to rule according to their own brand of ruling, and they forgot that it is God's people, and that the true king is God and therefore they should give to the people the shepherding the caring that God wants them to to receive and the fruit of it is they fed themselves rather than the flock and the flock got dispersed scattering Division. You have scattered my sheep, and worse, you have driven them away. Hindi lang pinagkalat kalat ang mga tupa, pinalayas pa yung iba. That is not what God wants for His people. God wants gathering, the gathering of his people. 
God wants the unity of His people. God wants God's people to be one in spirit, in caring. It is not the role of a shepherd to scatter. <laughs> the role of the shepherd, according to the mind and heart of God, is to gather, to gather. And that is at the root of the word church, ecclesia, iglesia, pagtitipon, pagbubuklod, hindi pagkakalat, hindi pagkakawatak-watak. And all of us who have been called to follow Jesus and who have been given some positions or even callings of responsibility over others, we should be mindful of that. The type of caring that unites. The type of shepherding, the type of, uh, of leading that would bring people together. The frustration of God in the first reading is somehow assuaged when we come to the second reading. Saint Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, tell, tells the Ephesians and tells us that those who used to be separated from each other, those who were far off from one another, kayo na dating magkakalayo, kayo na dating nagtitinginan mula sa malayo lamang, malayo ang tingin. Wala namang. <laughs> Marami pala dito ka-generation ko. <laughs> Hindi maitago. <laughs> ano? Ganun eh. Minsan lampas-lampasan pa nga ang tingin eh. Ano? But according to St. Paul, in Jesus Christ, you who used to bear far off from us of Israel, we are now brought together. In Jesus, the prophecy is fulfilled. I will shepherd my people, and I will raise a shepherd who will not scatter or drive away others, but will bring them close, Jesus. He is the good news. He is God's good news. But how did Jesus bring us together? Not through a contract, not through a negotiation, not through a treaty, but according to St. Paul. We who once were far off have become near to each other by the blood of Christ. He is our peace. He who made both one, the two one, dividing the wall of enmity through his flesh. This is not a piece of paper signed by two or three parties. It is in his person, in his body, in his blood, in his heart. heart wounded so that all would have a place. A heart wounded so that by that opening people could enter. Saints, sinners, Jews, Gentile, male, female, in his person. That's why in the gospel we see that. 
in his heart, in his person, there is room for weary and tired disciples. In his person, in his heart, there was room for sheep who were longing to be fed by God's word. In his person, all are gathered. But it meant dying for all, so that all may be one. How we wish it were just a contract. Sana pirmahan na lang ng papel at pagkatapos magpirmahan, nagkakalimutan. Hindi ganun ang daan ni Jesus at hindi ganoon ang inaasahan niya sa atin. It is personal. And so, at the end of this session, we are invited, enter Jesus. The good news in person, enter his heart. There you will find the gospel, the love that becomes Calvary, the heart that welcomes woundedness so that there will be ever a space for the tired, the weary, the rejected, the lost. And in that heart, in that person, we will find peace and reconciliation. The same with us. If we enter the person of Christ, hopefully our persons will be transformed. And then we go home, we go to our work, and with the heart of Christ in us, with the gospel evangelizing us because we have encountered him, person to person, the person of Christ, my person, then we could be agents, instruments, not of enmity, not of violence, not of hatred, not of bigotry, but of peace and reconciliation. But let it happen in our persons. Sana po pag uwi ninyo mamaya, sabihin ninyong, sabihin ng mga kasama nyo sa bahay, parang nag-iba ka. Saan ka ba galing? Parang may iba sa'yo. Parang iba. No? Hindi lamang sa mga bagong kaisipan at kaalaman, kundi may bago akong napasok. The body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. We all belong to Christ. And in Christ, we are one. May galing sa Northern Luzon, may galing sa Bicol, may galing sa Visayas, may galing sa Mindanao. May galing sa Brunei, may galing sa LA, may galing sa Canada, may galing sa China. Joseph, you're Joseph, your name is Joseph, right? Yeah, oh yeah, please rise. So you're there, oh, come. from China. Uh, yeah. from Argentina, from the U.S., from Italy. No, we have friends from India. But see, the body of Christ. In Christ, the gospel erupts as a concrete reality in the world. 
a world that is busy fighting each other, building walls and barriers, economic, social, cultural, whatever, just to separate us from one another in the person of Christ. We find peace and reconciliation. Tatapusin ko na. Pero hindi ako kakanta. <laughs> I have narrated this story a number of times, but I think it merits repetition. And I say this in a special way to my brother priests and also to the religious and our lay partners are lay the lay people who are missionaries no we are partners in the same mission you are not partners of our <laughs> clerical mission you are baptized so you belong to Christ in baptism so together we we are one body sometimes diba we see new situations we see new realities and we are turned off. What we do not understand, we push away. Something that looks parang strange to us and threatening, hmm, we drive away. Especially parang kapag nakaka-disturb. No. I have two stories. Once there was a, a lady who kept reminding me of her birthday. Bishop, my birthday is coming, ha? Huh? Please come to the, the, the dinner. If you have time, please come to the Mass. I checked, I checked my schedule and I could not. So I said, I'm sorry, I could not. But even with that response, she kept on ano, sending texts, calling, writing. No, at a certain point, I felt like, hmm, I better change my number. I better change my email address. Parang, is it not clear? I cannot attend. Nako, two days before her birthday, she even showed up. Uh -huh. She said, you have not been answering my text. I said, but because I have already told you, I could not come. Uh, and she said, but you know, kasi on my birthday, all the gifts will go to your diocese. And I said, when nga? What time nga? What time is your, uh, what time is the mass? Uh, Kasi naman tong secretary is not ka clarifying. <laughs> my. My fault, my fault, my most grievous fault. Oh yeah, no? How we drive away people. And then when it is to our advantage, kailan nga? Kailan nga? Hanyan, <laughs> ano? But, Jesus opened his heart even when he was being rejected. There is room even for enemies, not just for the makulit. And for those who are wondering new methods, new expressions. One catechist told me, wow, I attended that workshop on millennials. Wow, I thought being a catechist is just writing uh, 
a lesson plan. No, but you have to go to enter the world of the millennials. And it, it, it in a way disturbed her, but also enriched her. But that's part of the expansion of our hearts in our persons. Before opening it on a Ano tawag doon? Uh, syllabus or a, a, a lesson plan? It must start with your person. Huh? Uh, in my person, do the millennials have a place? Or are they driven away? No? Because they are too mysterious in their clothing, in their... No, no. I met one girl whose hairstyle was like two volcanoes. Taal volcano and uh, Mayon volcano, ready to erupt. Parang your tendency is see. What if she applies to the novitiate? Now, this final story. I was in a summer camp for the youth and they asked me to give a talk on finding one's purpose in life it was actually a vocation you know, a vocation parang uh, promotion but they did not use the word vocation baka no one would come <laughs> they might uh, they might get afraid so it was finding the purpose of life so i gave a talk after that question answer the first question i got from a young girl was bishop will you sing for us i said nobody told me that i would sing. Hindi ako nagdala ng minus one. I'm not prepared to sing. So I told them, ask meaningful questions. Ask questions related to the topic. So they asked beautiful and difficult questions. Then one boy raised his hand and said, Oh, so Bishop, Will you sing for us? <laughs> Talagang porsigido. So I said, I will start a song that everyone knows and we sing together. And we, we sang. After that, you know, they came to ask for a blessing. Some asked for selfies. Some asked for autographs on their journals, some on their t-shirts. One, one girl nga sabi, dito, dito, dito mo pirmahan. Misha, Misha. Go, no, 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 no. <laughs> People might wonder, how did the signature of the bishop end up there? So I said, turn around, turn around, John, turn around. But as this was going on, I was getting confused. I, I, asked, I was asking myself, am I, what do they see in me? Am I behaving like a bishop? Am I betraying my ministry? What do they see in me? Do they see a bishop? Do they see a celebrity? Do they see a... Uh, an actor? <laughs> what do they see? But all of this, so confusing, so confusing. But uh, I just complied. The answer came a year later. In a similar youth camp, one boy approached me and said, Bishop, I attended the youth camp last year, and you signed my t-shirt. I said, ah, yes, so, isa ka dun sa mga nagpapirma ng t-shirt, ah. Then he said, I have not washed the t-shirt. 
hindi ko pa pinapalabhan. And ako naman siya, yeah, one year. Oh, edi, <laughs> ano na yan? And then he said, but every night, I fold it, I put it under my pillow. I have not seen my father in years. He said, but with that t-shirt, I know I belong to a family. I know I have a father. And it was just a signature. It was my little bread. <laughs> it was not even the full fish. But it assures a child with an overseas Filipino worker parent that he is not alone. I told this story in London. There was a youth day of England and Wales. And after my talk, I saw a group of Asian, Asian-looking young people getting out of the auditorium and I thought to myself, they probably want to greet me because I'm from Asia, from the Philippines. And true enough, they met me at the gate from different countries, but there were some Filipinos. And one of the Filipino youth said, Bishop, I was there in that summer camp. I know the boy that asked for your signature. And I asked him, what are you doing here? I am a youth minister here in England. Look at how in the person of Christ, in the body of Christ, our little pieces of bread, even when we do not fully understand, might be a calling on, on the part of Jesus. Come, be part of me. Stop the scattering. Come, be one. Enter my heart. I shed my blood for you. May the walls be cleansed by my blood. Let us pause. With faith, with peace, let us turn to Jesus. and allow Him to transform our hearts, our persons,